So this is the second instalment of The Rock Behind the Roll. After the um, reaction we got to the first video, me and Mum are pleasantly surprised at what people come through with. So she's had a good week's warning to get some nice content for us. I have no idea what's coming, so this is going to be a treat for me as well as you guys. So here we go. Take it away, Mugwai. <laughs> oh, well, let's hope not to disappoint. Yes. I think we'll have to go to Barcelona. We'll oh, lovely. To, um, we'll have to remember the boat trip, which was uh, a result of Ronnie Nerick's friendship, which meant that when he, he had a couple of tours one on the Orient Express and the other on a boat in uh, that we were going to live on for a couple of weeks to oh. do basically just a couple of gigs really so if you like it's a bit of a jolly but I had to remember that there were two gigs and they were pretty important <laughs> there was work to do for our, um, Yes, for our inadequacies, if you like, or our, yeah, our treat. <laughs> so all went well, you know, it was a very nice boat. I don't know what type of boat a, a it big, is. It must have been a big boat, Mum. It was pretty big because there are a lot of us. Yeah. And it was Ronnie Spand and that was, that's a fair few. And obviously the crew. Uh, oh, and Alfie. And Pete, the minders, who were fantastic. <laughs> and they were great. Originally uh, part of the Cray. You're joking? Yeah, part of the Cray's unit. So if, if you want a decent minder, you've got to get East End. Oh this is the way it good works. Lord. Okay. No messing around. Absolutely adorable guys. I love them. <laughs> and uh, they were up for the crack, which is always kind of handy. So uh, the boat hit a bit of a... A rocky night, which was uh, due to a storm, and it was pretty rough. So Charlie Hart, who was our keyboard fiddle player, you name it, he did it. Did had his Titanic moment of playing through. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. As uh, all hell was letting loose upon the high seas, and we all did what any good sailor does, which drinks an awful lot of brandy because it settles your stomach. <laughs> and, of course, the piano was rolling from one end of the uh, dining room to the other. But, yeah, we we rallied forth. Uh, there seemed to be an absence of the captain, but we weren't actually aware of the fact it was a bit partial to drop a gin. <laughs> Clearly, his sea legs. So... Uh, I suppose it had got a bit fraught so when we uh, docked wherever it was. I think we had, I think it was Ibiza on the next stop. I don't know what we did with San Tropez, but that was probably another story, which will probably never be released. But however, there we are in Ibiza. And uh, Bilko, who uh, Roger Forrester's nickname was Bilko, he was Eric's manager. He was lovely. He tried desperately to keep a handle on everything. Um, and he had to report back to HQ in the form of Stiggy from the Stigwood organisation, which basically uh, funded Eric and his musical career, his musical output, and hopefully with a healthy return <laughs> for RSO. <laughs> so there was a little bit invested in this little trip. So Bilko decided that perhaps we were all getting a little bit out of hand and needed to have a, a reality check because, you know, business comes first, money talks. So, fine. So, uh, basically, we were not going to get paid for that gig. <laughs> not in our sticky little hands. Not in anyone's sticky little hands. He would take care of the finances, which normally is absolutely fine and normally the way it works. Except that we found ourselves in a bit of a predicament, really, because we've got no money, i.e. no cash, i.e. no spends. We were the whole day laid before us, of obviously to get ready for the gig. There was only one thing for it. Having witnessed what you can do with a piano, 
Wizard Wheeze, let's roll the piano out onto the <laughs> key. And just, you know, get a few of the lads in to sort of do some busking, really. Nice. I, mean, I have a nasty feeling it just might have been some suggestion I threw out randomly, like you do. I'm very good at that. Wizard Wheeze is absolutely. But anyway, he picked up a bit of speed, so without further ado, we have got a gig on the quayside. Uh, attracting a lot of passers-by who don't know who the hell we are, but they're quite liking the tunes, so we get some money. We get quite a bit of money. Nice. So, later on, I don't know if we'd actually got the gig over and done with. I really don't remember anything about that half, which was obviously quite important, but I don't know if we'd actually done it or it was the night before we were supposed to do it. Either way, we did end up clubbing. <laughs> because after all, we could afford it. You're in our beef here. Come on. Yeah. Let's see how it works out here. And uh, all went reasonably according to plan. So we got rumbled. And we got rumbled because on our way back, when everyone piled back up onto the boat in various shapes, as you can imagine, I think Ronnie and Eric came up with the idea, I have absolutely no responsibility for this, to... Uh, Alter the title of the boat, the name, <laughs> which was actually called the Welsh Liberty. That was the name of the boat. That was the name of the boat. Oh, okay. And uh, having sort of connections with the Welsh borders that Eric also had because he was hanging out with us, plus he knew other people who lived on the borders. They thought about the Welsh side of things. Mm. So, at some point, they decided to alter the name, so they just got hold of, I don't know, tin or tar, whatever it oh, was, no. dangled themselves over the side <laughs> and wrote, what a fucking liberty, <laughs> on the boat, for all to see. And, of course, nobody actually noticed at night, did they? Except in the morning, when Pilko... <laughs> <laughs> got off to check the fences and all the rest of it was confronted with this badly scrawled what a fucking liberty down the side of this rather nice <laughs> trendy state of the art boat yes the proverbial hit the proverbial and see it didn't go well but it was kind of okay because the bottom line of it was that Bill Co decided to haul me in. I mean, why me? I have no idea. But he hauled me in and gave me a talking to, which went something along the lines of, well, Kate, you know, I'm very fond of you and we get on really well and we've had a lot of fun, haven't we, on this trip and you and Ronnie are really good for Eric's spirits he likes having you around. However, you're not very good from a business point of view. Although fun has to be had by all, I think it's gone a bit too far this time. So uh, I would like you to realise that from here on in, this behaviour cannot continue because... Uh, Sticky isn't, isn't happy. This trip, as was the Orient Express, which I will refer to later, <laughs> is where Eric's career and future and economical well-being lies. The party has to stop. So... I was a little bit amused, thinking, well, I think my only wizard was, my only contribution was, was the busking bit. I'd absolutely nothing to do with the paint job. I mean, how could I possibly dandle myself over the side of a boat because I can't swim? I mean, 
I can't even float. I just go <laughs> boy straight down the bottom. So, uh, yes, he was a lovely man, Bill Cohen. and he had a terribly hard job. Because the point was, what was lovely about the time that Ronnie and Eric spent together was that they were very good friends. They became blood brothers, which horrified Patty at the time because she thought they were going to kill each other. But <laughs> actually, it's just a nice little um, thing that happens, whatever it's called, ritual, when two boys, you know, want to declare their ever-dying devotion. And... Uh, we had some mighty good fun. We were a bit of a shock for the American contingent who didn't know what the hell was happening. I mean, we they had two trips with us and I think we just fried their brains totally. I don't know if we did anything particularly helpful towards American and English <laughs> <laughs> collabs. Yeah. Yes, I remember it with great affection. Wow, that's brilliant. That's well, that, I've never heard that before, Mum. It's so true. I've had my eyes open there. Um, that is true. That isn't why my middle name's Liberty, is it? No. <laughs> Thank God for that.